our trip to basically started we wanted to go to the Olympics. We were in Vancouver and it was just awesome. So I said, we got to go one more time at least. And uh, so we decided to do the Olympic thing and we booked those tickets probably last April. And, um, you know, we really, we didn't book an airplane then. We weren't, I said, we should go somewhere else. So we decided probably in October, we decided to, try the Vietnam and um, so we started you know Marilyn did most of that but looking at a uh, travel company and she had a friend that recommended one and that's what we kind of went went with so anyway I don't know if everybody kind of knows where you probably do we know where where Vietnam is um, you probably can't see but Vietnam Ho Chi Minh City is right on the bottom here you know, China's, China's here, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, but anyway, um, Ho Chi Minh City is the first city that we went to, and it's probably about the same latitude as Panama Canal, so it's a long way south. Um, and Korea is up here, so <coughs> eventually we flew from Hanoi to, Cor to Seoul. And a five hour flight there. So, and that Vietnam or uh, Korea is about the same as uh, Northern California, something like that. So, anyway, we'll start with. So, that's sitting in. We actually flew to Toronto, left Toronto. It was first class, actually. Air Canada decided we should go first class. So. <laughs> I didn't mind. So, anyway, so we got to, we left on uh, January 30th from Regina. We got to Ho Chi Minh City 1 a.m. February 1st, their time. So February 2nd, we, we didn't have anything planned that next, that day, or I guess that was the first, but anyway. In, uh, near our hotel, there's uh, this is Ho Chi Minh. The he was a leader during the, for a long time, and everybody loved him. So, and in the back, and in the City back Hall. is City Hall. <coughs> so anyway, it was like 32 degrees that day and hot. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we just we needed stopped at this little place, bought. A, bought a beer or something to drink and whatever, grab a little stool and sit on the sidewalk and you know, that's what people do there. And, it's and uh, so this is some of the traffic, picture of the traffic in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, Nine million people, but there's probably in Metro 15 or 13 million. Everybody rides scooters, <coughs> young, old, doesn't matter. And you have to cross, we, we cross the street, our hotel's that way. We came this way, then we had to cross. So the, a river in Ho Chi Minh City, and uh, yeah, they're building lots of in investment. And so that, <coughs> that night, you know, you can see this is, this is a sidewalk. You know. <laughs> If they got three lanes of traffic for cars, they'll make five. And scooters, they don't have enough room, so they'll put them on the sidewalks. When we crossed over, we could walk on the sidewalk, but yeah. then the traffic got heavier. Yeah. They had to use the sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, that building is, this building is... Uh, um, embassy. Was the, the, the American Embassy. During the... <coughs> during before the war during the war uh, the next day we went to we're on our way to um, Coochie Tunnels, Coochie channel, tunnels. <coughs> and they're rubber plantations and there's acres and acres and acres of them they're a really big exporter of, of rubber and all these trees are you know they got a this string is 
high above and you know it's getting sap that comes down and you know there's they cut the cut the trees wherever and so some are high some are low goes into these little dishes that's just the string it follows down that yeah mm -hmm. the rubber is coming down the, the yeah the liquid the sap yeah largest exporter of rubber or something? Yeah, one of the largest exporters in the world of rubber, and a lot of it comes from there. Uh, we went to the the tunnels in the war. The Vietnamese dug tunnels to stay away from the enemies. Um, they would crawl in that hole. <laughs> so Some of the footwear they had, like you can see, these are, these are kind of normal, but this one you know your toes are going to be here but it the tread is going to look like you're going the other way <laughs> you know and there, now we're in a we're in one of those tunnels Marilyn could kind of you know squat and walk but I I couldn't I had to go on my knees so by the time the next day then I had the sorest thighs you could ever imagine yeah. <laughs> that tunnel system is a pr two, like probably 250 kilometers and they have all different levels, you know, and, um, you know, if it rains lots, the, they've got them made, they have them made so the water will drain into the river and come out of the ground and into the rivers. And they've got, you know, they have it set up to eat, you know, eat in there. And there was, you know, a hospital room and a room where pregnant women went and so, yeah. This is a walking tour of in Ho Chi Minh City. Markets, there's like the markets are crazy. You know, you could buy anything, anything, live or dead or uh, yeah. tires Take for it. all these scooters. You know, the locals they don't. Yeah, what did he say? They don't. They don't buy at some markets, or they would go really early because you know there was they buy days early. 32 degrees, and there's you know they got meat. raw meat oh. out in the hanging and whatever. So this is the Continental Hotel, built in 1880, and that's the oldest hotel in Ho Chi Minh City. They actually called it Saigon before before the. Uh, after the war, it turned into Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, Carvel Hotel. It, it was, you know, it was a short, short part there for a long time. Anybody recognize that building? With a helicopter. That's yes. a, that's a CIA building. Everybody thought it was a embassy, but mm -hmm. that's a CIA building. The last helicopter left Saigon from there and our guide says well you can't go up there but I'll get you up there so <laughs> anyway he paid the, it's an office building now so <coughs> so that ladder we had yeah we got to the top on an ele of the building on an elevator and then we had to climb up that ladder to get to the yeah level from here you that. can't really see the. there's another little level up there so and I was lucky enough to see my first two rats <laughs> 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 They were, they were in a little gutter below me, thank yeah. goodness. So that's, uh, and this is a view from, from up on top of that building. Uh, yep. Yeah, this is, we're crossing the street here. We are in a crosswalk. <laughs> <laughs> This is a. This is the laws, and I can go, I can go, I can still go. It doesn't matter. They make U-turns in the middle of the street, and it doesn't matter. Fam, like whole families, like there's the mom and two kids on this one scooter. They haul anything. I saw one that had a fridge on it. So uh, this uh, we're. Mekong Delta, it's known for like Vietnam, they grow lots of rice. They get three crops of rice every year, fruit plantations and so it's a busy and a busy waterway 
here. And you can, you know, people live in all them places. Uh, we're on this uh, sampan. sampan. It's called. Uh, we're we're going going up the up the river and going. So she's the driver. And a lot of like it's an ocean. It's the ocean is there, so it's you know there's tide action and whatever going up and down and. So it's it's pretty muddy water because it goes in and comes out. Yeah, these are the little waterways into yeah. the farming places and plantation, fruit orchards and whatnot. He, uh, we stopped and we cut that thing, or we didn't, but anyway, the, our guide did, and uh, but it was you're supposed to be able to eat the, eat some of that, but it was it was an older one, so it was no good to eat. So. That's our river cruise. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite. Anyway, uh, yeah, we stopped at a local farm and had a bunch of, a bunch of different fruits. There, yeah, like, there's lots of different things there, and uh, some are good, some aren't. But <laughs> this is uh, we're we're walking in this little village, and so I took a movie of this, a brand new house getting built in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> There's a little road. There's a jungle. So, uh, how's it? And you know, you could have an older house right beside that. You know, you couldn't see anything there, but there was, you know, they don't mind having an old house right beside a brand new one. So. Uh, our our guide says, "Well, do you want to go on a horse carriage?" Well, we didn't want to. We just walked and whatever. So that narrow little streets and in this village. Uh, I wonder how Orban would like to deal with all them wires. <laughs> <laughs> now we're heading back to the city, and I just I just thought that you know, big modern bridge amongst all this stuff. Our guide was saying that um, they want to get rid of a lot of this. I don't know where all the people are going to go, but out in the country and a little they more. They'd fall in, wouldn't they? They don't look very sturdy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see that the you know the tide comes up to about there, so that's. But you can see where there can might be an issue in a tsunami. Oh, <laughs> for sure. Just be all gone. Yeah. Oh. Well, I got a picture of one that might happen here, like <coughs> later on here. So, um, yeah, this is just the market. Uh, that was in that town. Next in that to town, yeah. in Mekong. It was Delta. yeah, busy, busy. And then we, we went, went for lunch. So anyway, on our on our tour, they arranged all hotels. Our guide, we always had a guide and a driver, and um, so anyway, a lot of meals were arranged and like we always had breakfast in the morning and then they drop us off for lunch hey well so this that that fish is elephant you know, ear fish. elephant ear fish and he he said oh it's really good <laughs> well it's cooked so so much you can yeah it was it was okay but it was <laughs> whatever and lots they give you lots of stuff and a lot of the menus were pre-ordered so that one had one two three four five seven items on yeah. it so the Fish was one. Yeah. The noodles and whatever. Keep bringing the stuff, and you're not really that hungry. But anyway, <laughs> uh, this is in uh, Chinatown, probably of this in uh, Ho Chi Minh. We get we got back to the city, but anyway, oh, it's Tet, which is their New Year's holiday, was going to happen on about this 17th of February, and this is the second or third, third I guess, and. Uh, so lots of decorations. Everybody decorates there. And it, in Vietnam, it was really noticeable. But this is all the stuff that was for sale. Yeah, that's all for sale, this stuff. So uh, We came across, yeah, hit the video. Those are, came across a, 
just a little boulevard, eh? And all these guys are sitting here and they got all these birds. So anyway, they bring their birds so that they will learn how to sing, you know, they'll learn a new song from another bird or whatever. <laughs> and then they'll sometimes sell them, you know, they trade and whatever. But one thing I said to so Marilyn once. that was once, the food for them initially. Yeah, the, uh, the first thing on there with those crawly, that's the worms for them to feed. <laughs> but I said to Marilyn once, I said, there's no birds. Like, I don't see any, there's, you don't never hear any birds. And, whatever there Very is. So seldom. Yeah. Even in Korea, we, you know, you see an odd at magpie, which they say if you see two, it's lucky and whatever. But so we, uh, so that's a whole family on a scooter. They say that the kids don't have to wear helmets. The, uh, adults do. But <laughs> not, I'm not sure why. That's just a shot of a nighttime thing. So. Uh, this is from our from our hotel. We're in up. We were on the fifth floor, I think. But anyway, um, on the boulevard, they're making. This is for their New Year celebration. They're having a whole bunch of stuff every every day. There was something added or taken away or or added to, and so they're getting all ready for celebrations. And uh, now we f we flew from Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City one hour <coughs> flight to Da Nang which is halfway up the coast and this is uh, we're going to Marble Mountain in, in Da Nang they got lots of lots of uh, what's marble and they got lots of sculptures and this big all these cave and there's a big cave here and it's Buddha monuments and happy Buddha <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the guide said. <laughs> yeah. And each each place we had different guide. Like Ho Chi Minh, we had different two, and uh, the driver and the guide. And so anyway, this is the rice field here. Uh, speaking of tsunamis, this is in Hoi An, which is right near Da Nang. These marks are the level of the water. The flood. That, that town always floods, or lots of times. So, and they, most of the buildings here, they don't have very much on the bottom floor because they've got to move it up anyways when it floods. So there's nothing there. they got the living quarters up. For so anyway, that's pretty high. And this is walking along this little river in Hoi An and at night and so there's a there's a night market over on this other side so we were going over there but all these all these boats here there's ladies sitting in there they want to they want you to get in there and they'll sell you you could put candles in the water and watch it float around and for money you know another ride another ride so anyway. uh, one day we walked to the ocean and uh, it had the red flags blaring away, so we couldn't. Uh, he couldn't go swimming or nothing. The water was nice, nice enough. He could have went swimming, or I would. Sure. Uh, this is getting ready for New Year's. They brought a whole truckload of flowers or shrubs to around our hotel that we were at. And there so. was another truck waiting. Yeah. They had, yeah, tons of flowers. No, we went to a to a rice field. We well, we wanted to. We wanted to. I just wanted to, you know, farming or farmer. So I wanted to go to rice field. So anyway, this we got this kind of arranged. So they gave us the whole ball of wax. So, <laughs> so anyway, ride the water buffalo. I almost fell off, but I said, "Geez, Marilyn, you gotta." So she just went in that little area. So here we're plowing. We each took a run at that. Now we're harnessing it up for the other thing, aren't we? Now this is a little harrow thing. It's just like a rototiller, <laughs> but you nothing to hang on to except the tail. So. <laughs> 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 
steering? <laughs> now, well, it's supposed to make it yeah, go down. Like you're supposed to lean back a little I further. I think that water buffalo knows what he's doing. So, <laughs> anyway, this we got to we're draining this this part of the water here. So anyway, we you just get these. Yeah, you can see what it does. You know, you put that bucket out and you just get going. You never stop. Hey, you know, you just kind of a little knack to it. Yeah, there was a few that weren't. Quite so you that have good. to drain the field. <laughs> Then you, then you, uh, this takes 100 days or more, or 110, For a but anyway. Rice crop, yeah. So you go, you level all that off. We're done, hey. <laughs> now we're seeding. So you get little, the seeds are, they put them in wa water for three days, to, in warm water to, to let them get soft. Then you seed them. In 10 days, you, you're transplanting, you take them out of there and put them somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's pretty intensive. And then 100 days later, you uh, harvest. Well, it would be about 90. Well, 90, yeah. whatever. But, so that's harvested rice. And that's combine. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Um, yeah, after it, you let it, after, like those are, it's same as here, you can combine a little tougher or whatever, but anyway, so then they, they dry it, then you put it in this thing and you pound out, so you got. So is the rice right inside the stalk? No, no, seeds. Right. Yeah, little seeds, you could, yeah, go back there. See, it's right, see it. the right little in here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, just like, just like, oh, you know. Feet wheat or mm -hmm. anything a little different but so anyway they pound you pound we're pounding that and that knocks the hull off of the rice so here you're trying to clean it and i said i could take it home and do a better job but anyway <laughs> <laughs> easier no mechanized there nothing so here we're um making little pancakes on there's on this a little, little that's little a little uh, skittle thing with a you know you fire underneath fire it. underneath it so uh, so then the, uh, we had supper <laughs> we while we were <laughs> yeah while we were working like the that other lady in there in those pictures it wasn't this guy's wife he, the wife was working um, making the meal. making the meal so anyway. Get the seven up and there's the family. The seven up there all the time, right? Well, well, we didn't want to didn't want to drink water. Oh, so you're so, that anyway, this is the farmer and his wife, and this is other helper in the field there. So, so that was a and good the day. Farmers put, huh? Farmers put. Yeah, this this uh, the farmer he he has half his foot missing from a landmine, oh. and. Um, so there's, you know, there's landmines still in the, in Vietnam, and uh, Agent Orange is a, is a problem there too. There's still kids being born with birth defects. So, so the next morning I decided to get up and see the sunrise, but no sun. It's about, <laughs> it's about as good as it gets. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, pardon? Just haze. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just yeah. cloudy. And cloudy that day. Yeah. So now we're on our way t from Hoi An. We're going to... Hoi. 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 Yeah. Hoi. yeah. <laughs> and this is a... Uh, uh, go back. Go back. Yeah, okay. Was it kind of cool? They looked like they got cold. Well, it's... Oh, feet. well, yes. <laughs> yes. Eight, 18 for them is cold. So yeah. 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 They'd be wearing that 18. Kirk is on in sandals. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's, they got sandals on. But yeah. Anyway, a lot of... And you see a lot of people wearing masks. And, you know, it's, some of that could be smog. But a lot of people wear them just to protect their face from sun and... Wind. Wind and whatever. So that's one of the dragon, dragon bridges bridge. or bridge with we and um, <coughs> so we uh, swift swastika. We saw that quite a few times, but that's a it's a major symbol for Buddhism. It's been for thousands of years, probably. 
and I, you know, I saw that one day. But mm. so anyway, we had we went for lunch at this place. So anyway, I ordered a bowl of soup, like it's like a mixing bowl size, and she had a salad, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, there's a beer a beer bottle there, so that kind of gives you a relative size of all that, you know. It's it's um, they're huge. This um, this is a musical instrument that <coughs> there's only one string on it, and that that stick at the end they kind of move, move it, it back, yeah. back and forth. Yeah. So it's you know it's pretty twangy, but um, it is a traditional musical instrument in in Vietnam. We just we were at this um, temple. And uh, so the, there was six performers doing something here, so we sat down and watched them. Yeah. Some other ones were playing little little teacups, you know, like those little tiny mm -hmm. bowl-shaped things, and yeah, that was another instrument. So. <coughs> oh, that was just outside our hotel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no. So this is. Hotel or Saigon Moron Morin Hotel in Hoi. Hoi. So uh, it was kind of fancy. Marilyn took a picture. Yeah, the little, little petals on the towels. So. Yeah. It was built in. When was that built? It's 1900 or yeah, something. 1910 or so. It's a lot of French influence in Vietnam. So. Uh, this is Imperial City. Call it a really big grounds of temples and emperors. And <coughs> these big urns, you can see, a whole, I think there's like 15 of them or something. Yeah. Maybe. But that's a bullet hole from the war. They were built in 19, 1885 or 1835. 18, so. and that's a bullet <coughs> mark there. We did see some, you know, the other places that a lot of, you know, that you could see some damage that they haven't fixed. A lot of, like UNESCO wants to have given given Vietnam some money, but not getting used for where it's supposed to be used. So it's going into people's pockets. Yeah, there's lots of bribery there. More Seven Up. And this is this is one meal at a, at a so that's crab soup. It was and good. These, and it, some it was of the, all good. Some of the soup textures were really kind of hard to take. Like they were slimy yeah. type. Yeah. Have you ever had a hot and sour soup? Hot no. and sour soup is very yeah. much like that slimy. Anyway, that was that. Once you got <laughs> past the lips, it was okay, but <laughs> <laughs> hard getting it there. Spring rolls. Uh, uh, but just how fancy yeah. they did everything up. Like it was a presentation, presentation was everything with them. Yeah. Sauces, yeah, make sure you use the sauces. No black pepper in Vietnam hardly at all. No. So for some reason. Dessert. And the bill. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. we didn't have to pay it. It was oh yeah, well, it's that hundred and yeah. The so one seven up a coffee or two seven up a coffee and an iced tea. One hundred and forty thousand uh, Viet Cong dong, which uh, which is only about uh, fourteen bucks. So how much was it? Well, about fourteen. No, no, not that much. Seven. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So seven dollars was what it was. This, uh, <coughs> it's a pagoda, tallest structure, tallest religious structure in Vietnam. And there's huge grounds around this, and there's still monks. Monks reside on it. They look after all that. So. And uh, so we we had we had walked all the way down to that, and then we took a boat back. Not this one; it was on the same river. But anyway, and uh, Bonzi Bonza. display. Yeah. Bonzi. <laughs> 
potted plants getting ready for New Year's. I got lots of decoration. This whole, there was a big long park, like for, I don't know how many blocks, three or no. four. Yeah, at least. That's our, uh, one of our guides, the guide and the driver. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't yeah. out of place at all. Uh, now we, we left uh, Hoi An and flew to Saigon, or um, no, we're Hanoi, leaving. Hanoi, yeah, Hanoi, Hanoi. This is the first bridge we've crossed going from uh, airport to our hotel, so more scooters with trees and boxes. And yeah. <laughs> Oh, and then we're eating again. Yeah, we had gone to a um, water puppet show, and then we went for supper, and they, it was pre-arranged. And this is our hotel. It's like it's only really well, narrow can... from here to there, but it's kind of long. So. Oh, that's the whole width of the building. That was yeah. the width of the yeah. building. <laughs> yeah. And that's a view from outside our window. So yeah. Back these alleys. these water these are all water tanks and they the guide says they the city or somebody comes and they pump water into them every day or whatever just mm -hmm. so now we're at the Canadian Embassy in Hanoi but they wouldn't let us in <laughs> so just for business and they said if you ever want to if you ever get there you don't really you just well you're we probably talk, in trouble so. yeah we talked to a guy at the olympics that worked yeah. at the embassy and he said no no you never want to see me yeah. <laughs> yeah. so anyway this um <coughs> ba body in body in square where ho chi Minh lies in state so his body is you can still see it and he died in uh, 19, oh, I can't remember. probably 80 mm -hmm. something. So, and it's not open because of the holiday, but if it was, you know, it's, it's just jam packed. Eh? <laughs> that yellow line, it's a good thing our guide was there because I would have went right to the front door. But <laughs> <laughs> these guards over here, they this guard over here, two of them, they have guns, so <laughs> you don't cross that line. <laughs> That's the um, governor's residence on the grounds. Um, Ho Chi Minh never want, he never lived there. He didn't want to live there. He was, uh, Ho Chi Minh was, he traveled the world. He knew six languages. He, everybody loved him and yeah. This thing, all, all the peoples on earth are equal. Each people has the right to to life, happiness, happiness, and liberty, Ho Chi Minh. So, he's a communist, but go to the next one first. Okay. Uh, this was in a little, you know, they have a little museum thing. But it, anyway, Nixon, President Nixon thought he could bomb Hanoi enough to win the war. But anyway, go back. December 1972, 12 days and nights of bombing in Hanoi, 663 B-52 missions, 40,000 bombs. People in the north and Hanoi shot down 34 B-52s, uh, shot down eight on December 26th, and uh, President Nixon declared a ceasefire from the 20th parallel north, so, um, which is probably right about in the middle of, like around Da Nang, where we were in the second go, so. Vietnam has been at war for a long, long time at different, you know, the Chinese wanted them, the uh, French, uh, so. But they have the will to win. More Talk scooter. About loading up loading. your scooter. Yeah. Did you ever feel unsafe? <laughs> no, not really. Never. No. No, no even, like it's a communist country, but. We didn't see any soldiers hardly, you know, you see odd one, but just where they're supposed to be, there's... The government, you know, everybody loved Ho Chi Minh, they say, but they don't like the guys now, so... Mm -hmm. Anyway, more lanterns, yellow lanterns and red were main the main colors in this market. Mm -hmm. Streets. 
This is a little, um, <coughs> down a wee little alley. And uh, like a lot of time, yeah, you, you know, the main streets, but in between buildings, we narrow and dark and whatever. So we had to use a flashlight basically to on the phone tell yep, where we're going. Go but anyway, I didn't see it, but Marilyn saw another rat. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it ran between me and the guide. Yeah. Okay, so we're in the yeah. You can. This is a pedicab ride back to our hotel. About forty-five minutes it was, but anyway, I just show you a little bit here. I'm in the I'm taking the picture. Marilyn's in the front there, so yeah. with that guy. So at intersections, people just you know they just come, they merge, they do whatever. Nobody gets hit. Nobody whatever. I don't think he'd do that in Strasburg. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the guys that drive, they're always. On their so, horns okay, to let people know they're behind them or coming and crossing the street here. Just, yep. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's our hotel <laughs> in Hanoi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah it was quite even. a comfortable ride. This is uh, Hoyn Kim Lake, uh, just outside our hotel. So it's it's a uh, we're basically right in the middle of the city there, and uh, so it's uh, fairly big. We're at the south end of it, but you can walk around it. We did that lots. So that's a little bit of the traffic. There's big trucks coming, you know, two trucks coming towards us. The little cars over beside him, and another car right beside him or us. But anyway, Marilyn never felt scared. And they were <laughs> I honestly didn't no. like honestly. They were all our they were all good drivers. Were so eh? good. Yeah. But you look at that and think, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. What are we headed for? Yeah, here? they don't worry too much. I just like trucks. So. Not no, there you would. We wouldn't have been going a hundred. So probably you could see the speedometer, but anyway. And they got like big trucks, eh? Five axles on that <laughs> thing. So anyway, this day we're going to a. We stopped at this. We're going on a on a reservoir, reservoir tour and going for lunch somewhere. So anyway, we stopped at this place and it's New Year's, so they're just finished butchering the pig for for uh, for New Year's. They wanted us. This this is the farmer or this guy. He uh, he wanted us to come back for have a party so anyway <laughs> <laughs> we passed on that but we saw yeah we saw everything so now we're on a res on a reservoir going to over to a village reservoir um it it's 60 meters deep there's the guide says all the people that used to live in the valley now they're living on top of the mountain so anyway and another hazy day it was it always seemed like when we were on those kind of things, it was hazy. We wanted to see something a long way. You couldn't see nothing. But uh, a homestay at this village. You can actually, you know, book that and stay there. Not here. Our guide wanted to take us for a drink of wine. He wanted a, you know, a real local guy. You know, this guy had some chickens and cows and whatever. And but anyway. He talked to the son of this person, and oh, he he's drunk. We had to. He had. It's holiday time, so <laughs> he was drunk already. So we didn't get a drink from him. So. And that's a restaurant and the, some girls there that were serving us and stuff. There's our boat, not the big one, the little one. <laughs> And uh, they just take a auger engine motor and stick a little propeller out the end and away you go. <laughs> and he measures out his little bit of gas, pours yeah. it in, and away you go. Doesn't overdo it with the gas. No. So he even got fifth wheel scooters. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
And this is this is in Hanoi uh, at night a, bil a big shop. There is, you know, there is, um, there is, uh, you know, you can see people that wouldn't, they're just surviving, and then there's people that are doing pretty good, and there's places that you can spend whatever money you want to spend, so just like any big city, so. On the road again, we're going to Halon Bay. Bay Cruise, another truck. So we're on on our on a boat, and we're overnighting on this one, <coughs> not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Picture of a shrimp boat. So we go to uh, a floating village, and uh, so that they they live on that. Well, we got off the boat and we're actually traveling around in a little rowboat. So yeah. that it was a lady rowing. Anyway, that's the husband and that's the kid of the one that was rowing our boat. So people live in those huts. They're just floating, floating on those blue plastic bags. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder what, I said to Merlin, I wonder what chemical was in those, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Anyway, uh, Helen Bay is a, uh, it's, uh, yeah. I guess you can read that. It's recognized by UNESCO World Heritage Area, ancient fish fishing villages. Uh, use mostly traditional methods, you know, that shrimp boat, or you know, you s we saw people on the shore, you know, getting clams or whatever, and everything else. So, yeah, that's our boat we were on overnight, and they have. Uh, a cave in one of the, one of the limestone. It, there are lime, limestone evidence that people lived in these eight to fifteen thousand years ago. You know, there's art. They find artifacts and stuff, so it's quite elaborate in there. And it's we took well, we took lots of pictures of them, but um, yeah, it just looks like it's dripping. You know. Keep wondering All when that's going to fall down. Yeah. You know. Some more boats. Uh, we're now we're back into Hanoi. Um, this is soup, supper, whatever. Yeah, I'm leaving the next day. That was good. <coughs> the guy, the the guide is the one on the right. The driver is. Trevor. He couldn't speak. He couldn't speak English, but his name's Trevor. So. <laughs> uh, now we're in. We're in. We flew from Hanoi, and we got to Seoul. Um, it's five hours to fly to Seoul. So anyway, this is in the uh, Seoul Tower. It's a big. It's not a big tower, but it's. I'm not sure how tall, but we went to the top of it, and that was another hazy day. And but that just shows you some. The amount of building. Seoul is, um, yeah, hazy day. Ha Seoul is 233 square miles, 10 million people, 25 million in the metro area around. It's the fourth largest metropolitan economy in GDP in 2014 after Tokyo, New York, and Los Angeles. So it's it's really, really booming. And they're, you know, when we flew in there, it just looks like like bunching, like there, it's kind of mountainous and stuff around there. So it's, you know, there's bunches of condos and buildings and so. Uh, that's the tower. That's the tower we, that were, we up. were up. Yeah. This is, uh, probably a non-busy day. Well, My Andong maybe. Market. Maybe, yeah. yeah, it's an old market in Seoul. But you know, we in uh, you can see some English signs and stuff, but we had more problems communicating in Korea than we did in Vietnam. For, uh, you know, restaurants, a lot of, nobody would speak English unless there was a patron there that was. But 
first Olympic sign we saw. That's in Seoul. And uh, this is an Olympic um, that was the information, information center <coughs> in Seoul. This is on top of the 21st floor of our hotel and they got a you know a bar up there and the restaurant is there so but it was chilly up there yeah I took a guess that this might be potato chips so <laughs> <laughs> I bought it so anyway there it was uh, we're on our way to um, down the road but anyway this bridge is the 33rd bridge across the Han River in Seoul like there's that's the 33rd one getting built now we're at the uh, DMZ, the demilitarized zone. It's an area between North Korea and South Korea. Um, there's a line, it's four kilometers from one side to the other. And, and they say it's amazing. There's no, like, no people there. Never, if you go there, you probably get shot. But anyway, um, animals, lots of animals, wildlife, everything, you know. <coughs> but you know you get right to we're not right at the edge but it's close uh, this family we that day we on our tour these this this family was with us and uh, with a guide and he's uh, he's a pilot they live in Dubai he he's a pilot or works for Emirates and um, they, uh, I said, I said we're from Canada or Saskatchewan, Canada. Oh, you guys don't let us in there. You know, Emirates, they come into Emirates. into Toronto a few times, but Air Canada and the government won't let them because. And he said that if you saw what they do and did in Europe, in Europe, <coughs> you'd know why because yeah, they just took he over. He doesn't you know. blame Canada. You know they're they're taking away all the big flights and the money making ones. So anyway, so he was an interesting guy, and the family was. You know, I lot asked them lots about airplanes and stuff. So here we're trying to, you know, in North or in South Korea, there's a lot of people want to join up with North Korea again. You know, like so they're trying to push this together and. Whether it's ever going to happen again or not, who knows? This is that. Well, uh, and then after that, we did go down into a tunnel. Yeah. Um, yeah, you couldn't take cameras or but nothing. But you couldn't right? take cameras or anything in. So, but we there's, did. There's four. <coughs> there's four <coughs> tunnels that the North Koreans have dug across, dug underneath the the line into South Korea <coughs> that they found. Um, this third tunnel that we went down, yeah, we went down in this little train thing for quite a while, and then we walked for a long ways, and you come to this steel gate with a or wall with a little hole, and on the other side is North Korea, mm -hmm. but nobody was waving. So, um, <laughs> and it was kind of funny going down on this little train thing. Uh, this guy asked me. Or I asked him where he's from, and he's New York and New York City, and so he says, "Where are you from, Saskatchewan?" Oh, home of the Riders. So, <laughs> so, anyway, so. Uh, well, no, the like the government built them for North Koreans built them mm -hmm. so that they could. They could send 30,000 troops an hour through them, and they would invade Seoul. Like, they want, that's what their goal was. And uh, so they found them, and the North they Koreans denied them. them. Yeah, mm -hmm. they denied it, and, you know, they plastered the sides with coal dust and whatever, make them look Said like. Said they were, yeah, and they coal got a, mining. They got a fake village, that's where all the dirt went, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, this is a... Uh, Dorson train station, which is fairly new near there, and it's ready to, co to connect to North Korea. Like this, is, that that city is the capital of North Korea. So, uh, and it's a big. I'm not sure why they have it there, but it anyway. Um, 
like the railroad could go all the way to Europe, you know, go through, you know, Russia, Siberia, so and what everywhere else. in that building? It's just there. Nothing. Hmm. Nothing. Yeah. Just waiting for it to open up someday. Yeah. So now we went to, uh, after that, we went to <coughs> Korean barbecue. So anyway, we've we got duck going on here. Yeah. I That's our guide, so anyway. And it was good. Yeah, it was good. There's a duck, they just bring you in. They said it's duck anyways. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually pretty good, so with all that other stuff. They do eat fatty meats though, really. Kimchi at every meal practically. Yeah, kimchi is a uh, fermented cabbage. And it's um sauerkraut. Probably. Something well, you know, something yeah, it's not the same, but it's yeah. <laughs> Anyway, this is on the highway going back to Seoul. Um, you can see, you know, a bridge, but anyway, you see razor wire, little huts. Uh, we did, that day we did see some with guys with guns in them, rifles. Um, and this is in South Korea. So, but anyway, there's a river that comes from North Korea and it goes into one in South Korea here. And it's not that far. But anyways, the North Koreans will try snorkeling or swimming or whatever. So they say if uh, don't accept any soggy money, so that's where we come from, North Korea. So this is on. We went up the tower that this one night. It, I'm not sure why this picture's there, but anyway, I don't should know. have been back. But anyway, and we got somebody to take a picture of us. So anyway, the day after we're at Seoul, at the DMZ and we couldn't see nothing, clears the bell here. This is the next morning <laughs> in the hotel. So They even have a royal hotel in Seoul. <laughs> and they're still building. This was, uh, we went to Korean folk village and there was you know a bunch of <coughs> things going on there and this this is Michelle um, there's people were skating here and sledding and whatever so and this is a day this is a day before Tet which was the New Year's so anyway we we weren't we were supposed to go to this place the next day but a guide uh, was with us in the morning. She said, geez, we should get that changed because the traffic will be just crazy. So anyway, uh, the driver says, well, okay, Major we'll entrance. take a bus and we'll go in the bus lane. So it's just, you know, take a, if you go in a van, you got to ride with all, go with all the cars. Well, the bus, he, he's going like 100K instead of 10. So, so we didn't. It was yeah. good. So there was a driver here there. and us. So four people <laughs> on a big bus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it worked. Uh, this is on the subway. I had a hell of a sore back that day. So <laughs> this is the first seat. I said, well, for crippled and old people and whatever. So <laughs> I, I just sat there. And <laughs> it was bad, but anyway. Yeah, but the subways were so clean, it was unbelievable. Yeah. So, and this is the Korean War Memorial Museum in Seoul. And uh, I don't know, we, we quite often we go to war museums and stuff. <coughs> and, um, it, it was good. No comment there. It's just, anybody <coughs> recognize? Marilyn, Caitlin Law's mother, I don't know what her name is, but anyway, and Caitlin's brother, and a, f a guy that was a friend of, friend the, of the friend of the brother, Teaching. and he lives in Seoul, he teaches, so anyway, so we met them. That was after Caitlin had won her gold medal in the mixed doubles. 
Uh, yeah, there's, they've got a, you know, some stuff about Canada being the, in the Korean War there. United, Na United Nation members were there, so Canada was there. Got a display. This is a, uh, this is kind of a neat thing. Um, 1,300 identification tags make this up, and uh, it's actually uh, they actually have it in a big in a round room, and you know they got a video going, and it's yeah, it's it's pretty good. So this is another shot of the tower, but anyway, we're walking, we're going, Caitlin, Caitlin's mom and brother told us about Canucks Bar, so you got to go there. So anyway, we're, we're walking there, and I just took this picture, and as we're walking, we kind of... We needed directions. We needed some directions, so we asked this guy, and he spoke English, and so he says, where are you from? And he says, well, Saskatchewan. Oh, I've been to Saskatoon. So <laughs> anyway... He, he's uh, involved with Campotex, like the potash, so they've been to Saskatchewan. So this is Canucks Bar. It's break, it says break time, which you can't get a meal there then, but the beer was good. So. <laughs> and you can watch TV. Yeah. And that uh, Korean, fa a Korean family runs it. The owner lived in Vancouver, B.C. for 16 years with his parents, and they still live there. <coughs> but anyway, the son came back to Korea two years ago with his wife and two sons. And you can get Canadian food, Tim Hortons coffee in the morning, and uh, Canadian beer. So it was good. This is uh, last evening in, ho in Seoul. So this is in our hotel, and it like, yeah, it's... Uh, Yoy, what is that? Well, it's, a, it's a Korean barbecue meal that's yeah. prepared and brought it's to us. It's beef and shrimp and sausage and vegetables and, and I don't then know, you top the, it off with a yeah, fried egg. Fried egg on top of something. <laughs> so. like, it was all it was it. all good. Uh, mm, we didn't have that at every meal. No. What's that? Seaweed. Oh. No. <laughs> we'll get to that. Another picture of the tower. <coughs> anyway. Yeah, so we're leaving the next morning. Yeah. And that's the room we're this leaving behind. <laughs> this is our ho tiny hotel room. It was nice. <laughs> but you can see that the bed comes right to the edge <laughs> of the wall. And, you know, suitcase hanging over there and the washroom's over this way. But So now we're on our way to... Uh, the Olympic Games. So anyway, if you can if you can read this, you know, s it's maybe not the scale, but actually the airport in Seoul is an hour and a half from here almost. So anyway, we left from this station by train and went all the way to over there. Like subway or real train? No, no real, train. Oh, real train. Yeah, and it just got built, just finished for in Olympics December is for the Olympics. Got it going. And you can see, uh, you know, where we went, Canyon Station. That's where the curling and the I the ice events were. Um, and then the other Al Alpanasia. That's where uh, ski jumping was and and um, snowboarding. That's and we went to some of that too. So then you had to take the train from Kenyon back to Jinbu, and that was only about a 15-minute ride. Yeah. And you were up on top of the mountain then for the snow so events. That's the ocean right past Gang that was close yeah. to Yeah, sea. yeah, yeah. So there's ocean there and ocean there. So these are a few slides of um, on our way over there. Anyway, on back the up train. one. Back oh, up one. Okay. That big, that big thing sticking up there is a uh, lot. World Tower, it's 1,800 feet high, 123 floors, and it's the fifth tallest building in the world. And it's, you know, it's, you know, like I said, Seoul is 230 miles, square miles, so it's, it's quite a ways, it's a ways away, so. Uh, green green houses, and the blue, every time you see blue things, that's Jinzing. 
they grow ginseng there and it, in Korea they say it's six years old and that's the best if you got, buy stuff from other places it's only maybe only four and the we stuff they export export is only four years old yeah yeah but the real good stuff is six and they you know it'll cure everything we <laughs> went to a we went to one place and it'll cure everything uh, here's just a little round yeah there's some cows in that building and Uh, we're at the, <coughs> one of the things at the Olympics. Just outside the railroad station, that's where yeah. that was. And this is a, a beach, a beach area. That's just a, a big pond in between, you know. I'm looking to back towards the, the city where the stuff is, so. Very cold in the EC. It was really cold. I got my knees wet, but that was it. Okay, now we're in. Uh, this is Canada House. Um, just a place where Canadians can meet, or anybody, but you know, mostly Canadians. Um, it's the first day at the Olympics that we were there. We, uh, we met Jenny Jenny Scrivens and her mother. And uh, Jenny's the wife of Ben Scrivens, and he's the goalie for the Canadian hockey team. And that's Ben's mom and dad, Wayne and Donna. So we, yeah, we had a good time talking to them. We, and then we actually seen them quite a few times. So that's uh, Superstore Visa. Sold a lot of souvenirs and, there. And this is the lineup, all the people in front. <laughs> That's the hockey, and they're big at, you know, Coca-Cola ads, advertising there. The park was laid out really nice, like, we, it was all in one area, so you went through <coughs> one screening, and then all you had to do was show your ticket at whatever event. Mm -hmm. But it worked out good, because they'd sell day passes for people that had no tickets to any events, mm -hmm. and they could just come and wander around the park, and yeah, it was good. And this, this oval is uh, mm -hmm. where they had the long track, the speed skating. Uh, Team Korea House, it was just, uh, yeah, advertising and stuff. And the big McDonald's. Two lines there, you know, you could, if you wanted to sit down, you go in one line. If you want to take out, you go in the other line. So. The line for sitting down was probably oh, an hour crazy. long. And a guy would come out and say, Take out, come on. Door was open. You just walk in, yeah. order, and away you go. And there was always, and there was another big, you know, there was big places to eat too, you know, and you could get, you know, you could get almost anything, you know, Korean or American, kind of Western, I guess. And on the grounds, they had different things. Skating. This is a video. At the played it before everything. Soran, the master. Surang. Surang. Plays all the sports. It's just kind of neat, I thought. So. Did you see this as like an adversity all the time? Hmm? Did you 
see this as like an advertisement all the time? Yeah, yeah, they just showed it before the yeah. events. And this was, I just videoed this on a, at a celebration here. Anyway, that's the curling rink. There we are. So anyway, I took this picture. I said, the, American, the Americans is over there, eh? They're over there. I said they look like ball players. Like, they look like a ball team. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I guess the world found out they can curl. So. <laughs> anyway, that well, that night they played Norway, and like Schuster missed a shot. Like he had a wide open hit for three, and he missed it. You know. So anyway, but so they got smoked that game. But they, I don't know Came what they're strong. Like he said, they they played the best five games of their life after that. So. Uh, Joanne Courtney, what do she does best, I guess, there. That's uh, Rachel's woman's dad. It was kind of funny. We, uh, when we were at the, at the beach there, you know, we had taken a bus, hop on, hop off bus thing. So anyway, we wondered how far it is back to the grounds. Yeah, to walk back walk back so anyway we didn't know and nobody seemed to know so we've seen these three Canadians go into this coffee shop so we followed them in and well it turns out it was him and his his partner, partner and Rachel's husband so anyway we and uh, another yeah another story we I told them that this bully wrestler thing was gonna be in Strasbourg and Rachel's coming and da 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 da, da. so anyway um, she, he said, well, so, and we, when the next day we got this picture, and uh, so he said, well, make sure you tell Rachel that, uh, say hi to her when, when, you, when she comes to Strasburg. So anyway, the day of the rustler thing here, we gave Rachel, showed her this picture and said, well, we got somebody that you might know here. So anyway, and, uh, and she said, you know what? I was over there and like I he'd been talk she'd be talking to Colin about the the dinner and whatever and and uh, so things weren't f totally finalized because she said well I'm going to be curling and whatever emails and all that maybe not working not so good not using her so Canadian phone so anyway <coughs> we'll wrap it all up and get it all finalized when you get home or when she when I got home so but the date was good but the date was all good so anyway her dad said to her geez I met somebody that's coming to and says you're coming to Strasburg so anyway at the rustler thing she said you're the one <laughs> <laughs> so anyway that's uh, me and Rachel's mother I saw I saw this lady walking and I said that's got to be Rachel's mom so anyway uh, we are uh, very close to an Air Force base so this thing was flying over the grounds one day well, we probably heard it every day. Yeah, Play, uh, playing and every day. fighter jets around, and yeah. you know, it's between the Air Force Base between us and North Korea, which is probably only 50 miles from there. This hill, or this walk, is when they said, okay, everybody can walk from the train station to the Olympic site, and it's, it's only 600, how far? Oh. 600 meters or maybe a little more, but I think it went up down like that it was it was brutal you know so anyway we did we found a better walk from our hotel we were a half hour walk <coughs> to the grounds so we didn't do that every day so anyway if you go to a restaurant you maybe got to look at the pictures and <laughs> tell you so anyway this is uh we went to Pyeongchang which to to see the Olympic we want to see the Olympic Stadium. It wasn't where the ice sports are So we want to see the Olympic Stadium and the flame So we traveled by train there and then by bus So we we ate at this restaurant um, Somebody said we talked to somebody on the street and they said oh, it's really good. So and it was but anyway next They have metal metal presentations 
and that's the stage that's that it's and there's the Olympic flame uh, s sculpture outside that uh, with a bunch of sports on it uh, metal presentation that we saw it's uh, freestyle freestyle skiing men's aerials and they had about an hour entertainment before yeah lots of entertainment yeah, there really good stuff. it was good yeah so then that and then <coughs> so we wanted to do that we actually had a um, curling tickets for this night but Canadian men weren't playing so so we sold them to a scalper we couldn't get you couldn't get rid of tickets somewhere anywhere else legally so anyway um, so we decided we'd buy some ski jumping tickets men's team ski jumping so that's they're grooming it and pretty rugged you, and you can see there's no snow there except fake snow so and that night it was uh, two degrees minus so grooming the run before so did you see Mark Morris skate Oh uh, yeah, snowboard. Yeah, snowboard. that's this is just skiing, ski jumping. Oh, this was, ski. but yeah. we did see him one day. And then back at uh, curling. back at curling the next day. Uh, our Norwegian pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they this, were. Um, <laughs> this is the day. Yeah, Rachel or Canada was playing Great Britain. They lost that game, and that was like. I said in Maryland, that's a bad day for Canada, but anyway, just uh, this guy, this camera, he can, you know, it's got a bunch of hinges in it and springs and whatever, and so he can be walking and the camera's really still, eh? But supposedly, we weren't there, but one day he fell. This camera's right on top of him, so, and he, he, he can't do nothing, eh? So they had to. A bunch of players had to go and <laughs> get them off. Him off the ice. So. Yeah, no, it's all. It's, yeah. So this is uh, the Cooey playing as, this is the, is it the last day? Last of the round robin. Playing Denmark, first end. I think they got four rocks in the house, or three. Got hammer. <laughs> And taken forever to decide. Eh? But, so Benny says, "What are you doing?" He comes walking down the ice and point, and it was so funny. But anyway, so anyway, then after that game, we went. I just wanted to. We went to McDonald's, and they got this big sign about what where it's all coming from and whatever. I'll go back. Oh, okay. Can you read that? Anyway. No, I didn't read it. <coughs> Hamburger. Hamburger, cheeseburger, beef from Australia, Big Mac beef from Australia, quarter pounder beef from Australia, big spicy chicken burger from Korea. Uh, the chicken is the McNuggets are from Thailand. So who knows? Uh, these we're in Canada House here. Um, this guy is the World Curling Federation Vice President of Pacific Asia region Hugh Milliken from Australia and he he used to live in Canada but anyway he lives there now and his daughter Carly he curled in Edmonton in the world men's curling championships when Kevin and David were up there Kevin was going to university and kept David so anyway they came early and wanted to you know they went to some spiel for practice and it turns out Kevin and David were there so and they played Kevin and David and this guy won <laughs> there's Johnny Morris without his medal he didn't have his medal that day he had won it but he didn't win it not that day didn't. so this is um, <coughs> we went back to the rink that night and Canada is playing <coughs> Russia this is the first end <laughs> Russia has hammer and they got four so but Canada won the game 9-8 so they end up with a winning. And this is a one, this is a big train station that you know when we got there that's what what it is. But anyway, this uh, little sculpture embracing the sun, sun rising above the sea, uh, the sun in the middle there, and the sea is all around it. So it's kind of a neat thing. 
<clears throat> two of the 20,000 volunteers at the games, they're all over the place and they, you know, you could always find some one of them that could speak English, you know, like you never had trouble with that. And um, some of them actually, oh, yeah, you know, we met some, I, maybe one of those is going to Calgary. One of those gals was going yeah, to Calgary. To learn more English, better, you know, but she was pretty good anyway, so. And we went fish market at Joma Jim, which north of where we were, had to take a bus. Any kind of fish you want there. And these guys just seemed like, I think they just, you know, they got crab in their little wagon there. They just were out and Come finishing on. up. Yeah. So then we went, went <laughs> for a meal and um, go to this restaurant and the guy can't speak a word of English and whatever eh? and nobody could except there there was interpreters walking around the streets and we end up talking to some of them and then we end up got the one girl back so she you know kind of helped us out so anyway are those dates on the far left? these are beans, uh, beans oh. snails uh, shrimp Apple salad. apple salad, and some corn salad, uh, eggs, little hard bird boiled eggs, eggs. <laughs> little ones. Maybe that's why there's no birds. I don't know. <laughs> marigold, uh, marigold, and then some onion. So, and this is some raw fish. And yeah, not sure what that is. I'm not sure what that thing it. was, but anyway, yeah. we ate it. So. <laughs> and we and had crab. crab. Marilyn did the fish, and she went and pointed the one she wanted out of the tank. So, and <laughs> there you go, Diane. <laughs> yeah, this this is uh, the last dish they brought us. It's seaweed soup. <laughs> it looks like mud, muddy water, and it's uh, probably Didn't tastes taste about. Like I had one spoonful, but I put on a good face. And that's there. all I had. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, pretty slim, and they eat that stuff lots. But anyway, notice the two guys. These two guys there. There's four behind us. So anyway, after a lot of places they have toasts. Say so, they got this rice wine. They told the guy, owner to bring some more shot glasses. So we all had a toast, and then we had another one. So <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. And then we said no more. <laughs> yeah. That wine is. It's 17 percent alcohol. Oh, wow. So that night we were at uh, short track speed skating. And this is the arena for it. Um, these all the red is the North Korean cheerleader team that was there, and they went to quite a few events, I guess. That's the only one we saw them at. But when the cheering was, you know. Short track, like we had, uh, yeah, we had seats um, oh, yeah. right at the, there was nobody behind us. And we bought them last April, you know, so anyway. And this he was is. very happy, he said we're not going to get any beer spilled. Yeah, we're not going to get, <laughs> I f sent a picture to the kids. I said, nobody's going to spill beer on us because we're right. top rope. But anyway, this is uh, Kim Bowton. Bowton. Silver, me silver medalist. Ladies, thousand meter for Canada and uh, relay. men's relay here, and uh, Canada won the bronze in that one. So, so the next day we went to see the sunrise. <coughs> so, if, well, you'll see it in a minute. That's it. Looks like a cruise ship, but that's a hotel. And it's like, it's a big, you got a big grounds and whatever. We had to pay money just to go in, to just to go in there. Because we were up, we were up on the top, top there looking at the sunrise. And it's so a sun it's cruise water, at. Then. It's not sitting in water, right? It's just no, water. no, no, it's probably about there, you know, so you're up mm -hmm. pretty high. And this is south of the Olympic site. We phoned a cab, we had to get a cab, so anyway, we arranged it the night before, and a guy in the hotel, he couldn't speak English, so 
I says, cab, need a cab in the morning. Taxi, taxi, okay. <laughs> so then he phones the guy, and then the guy in the end, he can speak English, so. Yeah, so the phone was going back and forth between yeah. Ray and the hotel guy, and finally yeah. it was all arranged, yeah. so <laughs> each one doing their talking. This Hourglass Park is, is right in that area. The sand takes one year to drain out of that. It's another shot of the Just beach. Trim. Yeah. Marilyn couldn't figure out how to run that thing to tell the time, <laughs> so she looked at her watch. <laughs> <laughs> now we're back at the Olympic site, and uh, Canada and U.S. are having a street, street hockey game. And uh, Scott Virtue, he he was all done figure skating, so he was there too taking part. This is the day of the bronze medal game, and that's Fred Cooey, Kevin's dad. That's uh, Bruce Hebert, Benny's dad. So did he tell you about the tickets? Huh? Who told you about the tickets? Oh, yeah. Well, Canada's supposed to be in the gold medal game, so <laughs> the Olympic Committee took all these guys' bronze medal game out of their packages. So <laughs> so anyway, so then, so then they had to scramble around and find, and there was the fam like 40, I think, and, you know, families group. and group yeah. and friends and whatever of their, so, but they all got them. And, you know, they say it sold out, but it, you know, sometimes it didn't look like it was, so anyway. That's Cooey and the boys sweeping. And that's the score. So that was not good. Not great, but anyway, they just didn't play good enough. Mar a Swedish Maryland between two Norwegians. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I'd like to well, sit between those. Well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good yeah, company. most yeah. all you know, Thomas and oh, uh, Paul, Paul Trulson. He uh, it was kind of funny. Uh, there was a uh, slam curling and Kevin Martin there and they were talking about oh well you know Cooey and Rachel are yeah they're maybe going to do really good and you know Mike Harris and, and Martin said well uh, yeah, no guarantees you know Martin said Trulson only beat him once and we know when that was that was a <laughs> 202 in Salt Lake, Salt Lake City so then we um, this is long track speed skating we went to they're not racing they're just you know <laughs> <laughs> the Zambonis but anyway, so. so that was kind of neat that was that was good so anyway we're sitting beside this these people here and Kevin Boyer and Morella Ravana they're skeleton competitors at the Olympics and uh, Kevin he says that's the safest sport sliding sport there is. So that's a head first one. <laughs> so this next morning we're at the Big Air Men's Snowboard. This this is a ski jump thing. Alpanasia, that's what we're at that one night. But anyway, on the other side is the... is the... Yeah. That's they run they run three times, eh? So that's Sebastian Toutant. He won the gold. That was his uh, one of the ones that won. So yeah, one and of that his was runs. Mark McMorris missed his first two, so his last one was fairly simple and yeah. just looked like yeah, a farewell he, he one. He fell the first two <coughs> runs, and the last one he just did one little twirl and waved, kind of like no bad day unless you crash I guess so. so anyway this is a picture of of the winner Sebastian, Sebastian up there and on the screen so anyway that was the night of 
the, the day of the gold medal men's curling. So, anybody guess who that is? Yeah. It's Ivanka Trump in the red and black. But anyway, there's a few other ones. I should have a pointer, but anyway. The King of Sweden. He didn't have any security. He didn't need security. <laughs> um, this is um, Hugh yep. and Carly, those, that couple that we met. Sarah Sanders, she, you know, if you watch, she's a white horse, or the White House uh, press secretary there that's always on TV, but she's got her hand over her face. So. Ivanka was at that big air thing too when we were walking out. I figured, geez, what's going What's holding everybody up here, you know? But anyway, she was in the stands and photographers and TV. And so this is an Olympic gold medal game, at which uh, Americans won. Uh, this is the next day at um, the world at uh, women's gold. Saw these two, they're from Japan, curling fans. So I said, oh, let's get a picture of them. The garlic girls, they call them garlic, you know, a little nickname for Korean because they, uh, they all come from the same area and they grow garlic there. So. But anyway, Sweden won the gold, Korea got the silver, and Japan was the bronze. Uh, that's uh, me and Annette Norberg. She won the gold medal in women's curling in Vancouver. saying uh, bye to some of the volunteers. You notice in Marilyn's got some little Olympic mitts on her mitts on her keychain there, eh? So on her jacket. Well uh, one of them was really looking at those and so Well anyway. she said those are so cute. Yeah, so Marilyn gave them to her. Decided I could part with them. <laughs> so we went back to Canada House and <coughs> it wasn't really crowded but anyway they uh, the speed skaters, any of the speed skaters that were representing Canada were there and they had, had a little ceremony for them. So, yeah, some guy, there's some hanging, got medals around their neck. Uh, this is Marsha Hoodie. Hoodie. She, Hootie. speed skater from White City. Her grandparents are good friends of, of uh, a nursing friend of Marilyn's and uh, thought that if Marilyn could try to get a get to see her and whatever so she did yeah happened to see her that day and this is uh ben scrivens the goalie for canada men's hockey with the bronze medal he uh separated his shoulder in the in the semi-final against the americans but so he didn't play he played half of that game but he didn't play the bronze game but and this is, uh, it's the last night in uh, there, and we, you know, we're walking by in the bus, and the Olympic, some rings there, and moonshine, I don't know why that hit the moon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the next morning, this, this lady here, she, she, um, her name is Brenda. She lives there, she's a local, she teaches school. And but she, she did arranged our yeah accommodation she was, and stuff. Yeah, she arranged uh, along with that. That ATPI Sports is who we went through for the Olympic tickets and accommodations and all that for for the Olympics. Um, she was one of the top ten table tennis players in the world. She lived in North Carolina for ten years, teaching that coaching, coaching and teaching and whatever. I said. Well, I used to play table tennis, <laughs> <laughs> and she said well, I could beat you. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, and her, her, she got the. N I says, how do you get a name Brenda? Mm -hmm. So anyway, she said, well, in, in North Carolina, her name nobody could really understand it or pronounce it right or whatever. So just call me Brenda. So that stuck. This is uh, Cafe Elsa that. Um, with our package, they arranged breakfast, and uh, our hotel didn't have a restaurant, so this is where we went. And you know, they, it's like they said a four minute walk, I think it took two, but anyway, and it was all good. So, this is our last day 
at the Olympic site. Uh, just ready to go home, or not home, but back to Seoul. Notice one suitcase. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One suitcase, big one, uh, a couple travel or carry ons. Carry on. We did wash a few times, so anyway, <laughs> and we didn't carry, we didn't take much, you know, but because that's the train, that's the, you know, or the engines they got decorated, so they got all the Olympic things on it. There are a few slides of going back to Seoul in the country. No snow anywhere, really, you know, so. And we're back at Seoul. That's our last meal in Seoul. We only bought one because it's huge. So, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Lots of, you know, a bunch of chicken in there and veggies, kimchi. Kimchi on the side. And beer. 500 milliliter bottle of beer there. So. And that is and it. And that's it. Without a lot of. People drank beer, they used glasses, eh? They used to. But when Obama went, Obama went to Hanoi once in some little restaurant and he drinks it out of the bottle. So uh, one guide says, Obama style. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's, uh, that's some of our pictures. We, we got thousands, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it uh, gives you a little picture of how, how it all was. It was, I th- it was really good. Uh, everything was good. Um, people were, we never had any problems, like, never felt unsecure or whatever. You know, we didn't have no, nothing like that. And For you know, being bas- such a poor country, there was no begging. Absolutely yeah, we never nobody s- sitting no. around, you know, yeah. and to... And Vietnam. Yeah. 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 Korea has very harsh penalties since it's not yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it just it was amazing. Yeah. yeah it was well there really was you probably heard that the at the Olympics there was three people come out of a restaurant or bar and their Hummer was sitting there running so they stole it. Yeah. So anyway, well they got a big, uh, big it was a huge fine. Big fines, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sent home. They didn't let them leave by the way, No. No. So, and we never, we all, we never, uh, never got homesick really, you know, like I said, we, especially when we got, you know, Vietnam first and then we got to the Olympics. We're doing something every day, mm-hmm. you know, so it, uh, and meeting Canadians, which kind of, and meeting Canadians, yeah, yeah, it was busy. Yeah. We were seeing yeah. somebody all the time and different people and different things. And but you had to pack for like some hot summer and cool yeah. summer. And yeah. yeah. It's not normally that cold. cold. No, yeah. no. Well, it was, it I was, uh, thing, you know. yeah, we never ran in, like uh, when, when <coughs> we were, I think we were, yeah, they were saying, oh, it's going to be really cold and, but, and it was some places because they, you know, they canceled some ski jumping because it was too windy and cold and whatever, but we didn't have any trouble. So it was basically pretty nice. And Mm-hmm. Layered up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we uh, yeah, that's that's it for the pictures. But there's some stuff to look at here. Um, I got samples of some money. Um, they look big, but they're not worth much. But uh, <laughs> on both sides, Korea and and Vietnam, and some uh, you know maps if anybody wants to look at and whatever. So. Um, in, uh, well, on this, this one is, is, uh, Korea, so Seoul is over here, and, you know, basically this is where the curl was, right here, so. Yeah, we didn't see there's much 90 of that country. <laughs> in, uh, in Vietnam, there's 95 million people, and it's half the size of Saskatchewan. And, uh, you know, Hanoi <laughs> is big, and Ho Chi Minh is big, and, but there's a, it's a pretty big, you know, there's lots of areas, like some places we went, <coughs> there were, you know, it almost seems like you just go from town to town, mm-hmm. and whatever, and then some other places there's nothing, you know, you drive and there's nothing, but, um, and, and, and mountains there, like, lots of mountains. 
South Korea and South Korea, it's about they've got about 50 million people, and it's only you know I don't know. You say it's a corner of Saskatchewan. Yeah, something like that. And when I was there, I walked, I held hands with Jill and Soul because she's tall and it's quite claustrophobic shop and you couldn't do it like you. This was everything, right? Oh, I know. And I said, we can't, because we had no cell phones. I didn't know her address in Inchon. So I said, we can't get part of Jill. I don't even know where you live. I don't yeah. even know how to get you on the subway. <laughs> it's like three subways. I'm like, I can't get lost. I can't, yeah. I don't even know your address where you live. There was one. Well, and it wouldn't even help you if you did know. Like we knew the name of our hotel and basically where it was, but when when we, you know, arrived at our hotels, they would give us a card and say, if you have to take a cab, show them this, because they didn't even know where places were. Yeah. So. But there was one shopping in Regina, and people thought Cornwall was busy, and I thought. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. There's nobody in this mall. Yeah, we went yeah, to that's uh, right. when we were at the Olympic Stadium with the flame there. There was they had a, one of them super stores there too, you know, with the buy souvenirs. Like I've been in crowded places, you know, you know what it's like in a bus sometimes. You swish. It, the whole store was like that. It was absolutely nuts. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. The one in the the one in the Olympic site, at least they they were letting counting people, letting them so many in. And, he wouldn't let you in until somebody left. And so. But we, you know, yeah, we never got sick, I don't think, you know, like maybe an odd day not feeling great, but other than that, we ate there pretty good. everything that they could. And How many days we actually start to finish? Uh, all of February, basically. Okay. Yeah. We left the 30th of January, came home the 28th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, two weeks in Vietnam. So you Vietnam. are lucky not to have been ill at all because, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of changes of yeah. weather. And yeah. 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 Two and weeks busiest. in Vietnam and then two weeks in Korea. Mm -hmm. About nine days at the Olympics, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, anyway, um, big duck. Where were you when they had the Chinese celebrations for the New Year? Uh, well, that would be, uh, we were in Korea then, yeah. but yeah. it's not a big deal there. Like there was no, I didn't really notice much for decorations and no. But Vietnam, is Vietnam nuts, was you know. huge. Yeah. Oh, like the guy'd say, you work all year to spend all your money in three days. But <laughs> <laughs> and we all had, you know, all the guides were really good and drivers and and it was they're all interesting. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, there's tons of ATMs over there, and there and there is, but not every card works. I did. I left my. Um, I left mine at home when we took Maryland's, but it wouldn't work, so I was using, if you hadn't needed, we needed cash, I had to go use Visa, just get a cash advance thing, and I know some, most of the places it would work, but, but you go there and, you know, four million, I went one, I got four million Vietnam dong, <laughs> well, that's only uh, 227 dollars. <laughs> 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 if you want to, this little thing is kind of neat, um, <coughs> like a whole bunch of things what you need to know about if you're a tourist in Vietnam. So you, you know, you want to read these, Marilyn? Oh, it's kind of neat. They can look at them. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, one, yeah, you can be a millionaire because you got the big bills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many volunteers again did you say there were? Did you say? Well, it was, I asked somebody and they said 20,000. To me, I'm thinking, oh, that's huge. But I'm thinking, there's not many people right there. I mean, maybe they came from all over the country, but when you say there's hundreds of millions of people, or, you know, well, in, of in, at that Olympic site, that town is only 200,000 people. Yeah, yeah it was a small town. But place. within how many miles? Is there, there are millions of people. Well, uh, <laughs> not, not, really not in that there. Oh, okay. yeah. Because. There's a mountain range there, and it, like they say, that it's that the train that they built into that place now, like most of them people have never been to Seoul, and it's you know not very far across. Okay, so they did come a distance then. Some yeah, volunteers. yeah, there would yeah. be volunteers, and it, there was even people that stayed in Seoul. They were at the games, and they stayed in Seoul, so they would take that train back every night, and it's 
was an hour and just about two hours. Just almost two hours. Yeah. Now it's yeah, oh, now for it's sure. Well. They're building hotels and yeah. lots of around that beach. There's some and beautiful there. beaches down there. Like it was really there. nice. Yeah. yeah. In fact, some of the uh, that Brenda, she said, well, you know, they used to not let any buildings over five stories because the Air Force base oh. and all that kind of stuff. But now they are. And, you know, there's lots of buildings over. Know, ten stories probably now, but anyway, so no, it was it was all good. Yeah, Olympics are a big deal. Like I, I don't know, it's 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 really big, and it's uh, you meet people from all over the world. And, uh, the one restaurant we went to, you know, we had a table full of Russians there talking and whatever, and had a shot with them, and, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's a dirty so, job. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is it costs too much. Well, it does. Yeah. And even the even the you know, like the you know curling was the cheap <laughs> one of the cheapest sports like for thirty or forty bucks or something. You know, but you know that's ski jumping and ski jumping and big air. They you know they're a hundred. $150 a ticket. I mean, like the day to, to build for one, one event. Facilities is one event. Yeah. No, one event. Nobody nobody can, nobody yeah, can you, know, some you pay for each event. Yeah. Some, somebody said to me, what's that stupid sport in there for? The clinical thing. And I went, are you kidding? That I love watching that. I said, that draws a lot of people. I yeah, love that. Watching that stuff. <laughs> 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 you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was... Uh, no, it was a good time. Mm -hmm. And the, we were traveling one day and there was this Russian couple and, and this lady was talking to us and she asked something about going to the closing ceremonies. And we said, no, we weren't going to the closing ceremonies. Couldn't imagine being at the Olympics and not going to the closing ceremonies. Well, when you're paying around a thousand dollars for a ticket, I don't think I'm going to the closing <laughs> ceremonies. Yeah, eight hundred dollars. Not all the athletes went to that. End up, yeah. yeah. Some yeah. walked in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And weren't there probably fifty thousand people there at least, or so? Or were there? Uh, like no, uh, not that big a place, was there? It looked full. Yeah, I don't know how many. I hotels. thought they had said. Yeah. I thought it was below fifty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's it was thousands. thousands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 I think it wasn't as cold at the closing as it was at the opening. Yeah. Yeah. And the closing, they and then they, you know, they end up giving them a bunch of blankets and mitts and hand warmers and all that for the closing one. But I don't think they did that at the start. Didn't at the opening. Yeah. That they should have been. Yeah. And was it much evidence okay. of the war after all those years that they're fighting in Vietnam? There, the, uh, there's a lot of war going on for many, many, many years. Is there any evidence that there still was a war there at what, one time? Uh, no. Well, there's there's place, some of those, in Hanoi, there's half the city got bombed mm -hmm. and destroyed. So there's evidence of that in some places. But they mm -hmm. like, you know, they like the Americans now, most people. Just bring your money. Bring your money. <laughs> <laughs> no ill feelings. No. Ray asked the, one of the guides, he said, well, how do they feel about Americans? And his answer was, the war is over and they're bringing money in yeah. business. And building. And and building, investment. yeah, really investing. Invest. So, yeah. 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 So. Anyway. Thank you, you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much.